Welcome back to a new video about current sources using BGTs and this is our example number three. In this example we'll look at the Wilson current source which is a special type of a current source where we have a high output impedance. It looks similar to the example number two where we have three transistors with a beta helper but the, on, the advantage of the Wilson current source is this high output impedance which is very important for specific applications of course we will see that in the calculation step by step and also verify these in spy simulations so let's look at our example again a design example we will have this circuit this is the wilson current source you see actually the similar current mirror configuration and again one transfer extra for this uh, wilson effect we have one dc source which is vcc and we assume that the vbes all of them are 0.7 volts we assume that the Q1, Q2 and Q3 are all matched. It means again the early voltages are exact same, the betas are exact same and also the dimensions are exactly the same. In this case we use a beta of 100 but we will change that and see what the effect is of the variations in beta uh, for this load current which is IC3. And we would like to have that as 2 milliamps in this case for our load current as a design. So let's see what we need to do. Solutions. First we start with the calculation as said always we start with the node X and node Y so you just note them. You have also another node here but that is the exact same node so you just name this or that that doesn't matter. So if I now use the Kirchhoff's current law at node X starting there I can say the IRF will split an IC2, IC1 I mean and the IB3 which is shown here. And I call this equation number one for later. And now we have also the Kir Kirchhoff's current law, but then at node Y. And you see here I E3, which is the emitter current of the Q3, will split in IC2. And also in this curve, which is again splitting in IB1 and IB2, which is shown here. Now let's call this equation number two. Now we know, as we saw in the previous examples, that the VBE1 and the VBE2, which is the base emitter voltage of the Q1 and the base emitter voltage of the Q2 are exact same. That means the IC1, the collector current of the Q1 and the collector current of Q2, which is not this, but uh, not this one, but this one, they're exact same. And also the base current are exact same because they are related by the beta in linear fashion. And since that is the case, the emitter is also the same for both of them. So this is an important um, result and we will use this later. Now, when we now use equation number two and rewrite this using this information, then we can say the following. Since the IB1 is equal to IB2, we can say this is just IB2. And then this IC2 still, so we can say IE3 is IC2 plus two times IB2. Now, we can also rewrite this IB2 in IC2 over beta and then move on and then take it out. And we have here now IC2 taken out the parentheses. So we have 1 plus 2 over beta times IC2. Okay, now let's rewrite this also like this. Why? Because we have also IC1, which is equal to IC2. Now we have our equation and we can move on and then also change this put it in one fraction so you just do beta over beta and then take them together you have this expression if i now flip this equation i can express now ic1 in terms of the ie3 why do i do that because i see in the first equation ic1 and that is what i want to replace with something what i want later which is the ic3 in terms of iref that is the final goal now if i do that here i see that actually here so i can replace this so i just flip this fraction you see that beta over beta plus two times the ie3 now when i call this equation number three at a set and i now substitute that in equation number one what do i get iref is now this which is now this expression which is the third expression plus the ib3 still but we know that ie3 Let's call this equation number four first, but uh, we can also say that IE3 can be written as beta plus one times IB3. This is actually the same for the Q1 and Q2 in a similar form. And if I now do that equation number five and I say, let's now substitute this equation number five and equation number four here, just this, just this replacing here, you will get this. Now you see already what hap what's happening. You see an expression where you only see the unknown IB3. And this is really close to the IC3 because that's just a relationship with a beta. 
So if I now take all the uh, IB3s out, so you just do one fraction first, let me get this in the numerator and also make here in small steps the fraction, the, the parentheses, so the coefficient here for the IB3 and also make this, so you can now do one again beta plus two over beta plus two and then take them together in one fraction. You see also the following, the again the IB3 can be written as IC3 over beta and then you can now shove this beta here in the denominator and you will have this expression. Now what do you see? This is again exact same expression for the as for the beta helper using the BGD. You see this term which is exact same as the denominator and they have now plus two which is over that same term. So you get actually the following. And if I look at this, this is exact same expression we had in example number two using the beta helper. So I can say the following, if I now use this uh, equation and using this required load current, I know how much reference current I need. So as you see the 2 over 100 times the 101 and then whole thing times the 2 milliamps, you get 2.0004 milliamps. So it is actually 0.4 microamps larger here for the reference current compared to the load current IC3. So not that much difference. So almost the same as said here. So moving on and now collect the uh, information here, we need to calculate also the R. So we can now apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law there. We can say VCC is equal to R times RF plus the VB3 plus the VB1 or VB2. It doesn't matter, they're exact same. But we assume that these are also exact same. So we can now express the res resistor as VCC minus these two voltages divided by the reference current we just calculated. Now when you do that, 15, because it was 15, minus 0 0.7, minus 0 0.7 over that 2.0004 milliamps. When you do that, you calculate this, you get 6.8 kilo ohms or 6,800 ohms, exactly. Okay, now we have now our design complete because we calculated the res resistor here using this reference current. But let's check that in our simulation results. This is the actual circuit. We have, of course, the determined IRF and also the R. You see the values here. And we needed two milliamps. And how much do we get? It's 2.011. So we get 11 microamps actually more. So we have, again, a little bit larger current than required. So the resistor here is also for the reference curves, by the way, it is actually 2.00004 milliamps. So it is, again, a little bit larger. But see, this, the R must be increased in order to reduce this and also reduce that. So that is what we, why we need that tuning. You can also see that the base currents are exact same as we have uh, assumed and which is correct. So we need to tune this and I have a look at what we can do. And in this case, the change is not that much. So I need to go up a little bit. I need, I need to now go in this case from 6,800 ohms to 6,800. 37 just 37 ohms up and when you do that you see the here result is 2 milliamps now for the ic2 which is ic3 i mean which is our load current now is the design we need to have so with the tuning of the r only the next simulation result we will look at is the load voltage for the load current so what has this load voltage change which is actually this circuit now so we will change the load voltage here and what kind of effect it has on the ic3 which is a load current this is interesting so we will see what it has. And the result is shown here. So we see here the current, load current, IC3, and this is the sweep of the load voltage, which is from two to 20 volts. And you see the red line, it is almost constant. You can say it's actually perfectly constant at 2.000216 milliamps. So practically just two milliamps. So it is quite stable. And that's again a proof that this is a it's a very stable current source in terms of the change of the load current, load voltage here. All right, guys, this is our example number three about the Wilson current source using again three transistors using BGTs and very similar to actually example number two. But the the one advantage of this current source is that it has a very high output impedance, and that's actually a characteristic you don't see in the beta helper or the simple current mirror. We will move on, of course, with another example using the Wittler current source in the next examples. So stay tuned and see you next time in another video. Take care.